The infinite is only a manner of speaking. You have no idea how much poetry there is in the calculation of a table of logarithms. Mathematicians stand on each other's shoulders. In mathematics, there are no true controversies. Complete knowledge of the nature of an analytic function must also include insight into its behavior for imaginary values of the arguments. Often, the latter is indispensable, even for a proper appreciation of the behavior of the function for real arguments. It is therefore essential that the original determination of the function concept be broadened to a domain of magnitudes which includes both the real and the imaginary quantities on an equal footing under the single designation complex numbers. If others would but reflect on mathematical truths as deeply and continuously as I have, they would make my discoveries. Mathematics is the queen of the sciences. Arc, amplitude, and curvature sustain a similar relation to each other as time, motion, and velocity, or as volume, mass, and density. Sophie Germain proved to the world that even a woman can accomplish something in the most rigorous and abstract of sciences, and for that reason would well have deserved an honorary degree. When I have clarified and exhausted a subject, then I turn away from it in order to go into darkness again. There have been only three epic-making mathematicians, Archimedes, Newton, and Eisenstein. I have the vagary of taking a lively interest in mathematical subjects only where I may anticipate ingenious association of ideas and results recommending themselves by elegance or generality. You know that I write slowly. This is chiefly because I am never satisfied until I have said as much as possible in a few words, and writing briefly takes far more time than writing at length. Life stands before me like an eternal spring with new and brilliant clothes. The enchanting charms of this sublime science reveal only to those who have the courage to go deeply into it. To the distracting occupations belong especially my lecture courses, which I am holding this winter for the first time, and which now cost much more of my time than I like. Meanwhile, I hope that the second time this expenditure of time will be much less, otherwise I would never be able to reconcile myself to it. Even practical, astronomical work must give far more satisfaction than if one brings up to be a couple more mediocre heads, which otherwise would have stopped at A. The total number of Dirichlet's publications is not large. Jewels are not weighed on a grocery scale. I have had my results for a long time, but I do not yet know how I am to arrive at them. When a philosopher says something that is true, then it is trivial. 
when he says something that is not trivial, then it is false. The problem of distinguishing prime numbers from composite numbers and of resolving the latter into their prime factors is known to be one of the most important and useful in arithmetic. Mathematics is concerned only with the enumeration and comparison of relations. A great part of its higher arithmetic theories derives an additional charm from the peculiarity that important propositions with the impress of simplicity on them are often easily discovered by induction and yet are of so profound a character that we cannot find the demonstrations till after many vain attempts. And even then, when we do succeed, it is often by some tedious and artificial process, while the simple methods may long remain concealed. Further, the dignity of the science itself seems to require that every possible means be explored for the solution of a problem so elegant and so celebrated. Finally, two days ago, I succeeded, not on account of my hard efforts, but by the grace of the Lord. Like a sudden flash of lightning, the riddle was solved. I am unable to say what was the conducting thread that connected what I previously knew with what made my success possible. By explanation, the scientist understands nothing except the reduction to the least and simplest basic laws possible, beyond which he cannot go, but must plainly demand them. From them, however, he deduces the phenomena absolutely completely as necessary. Theory attracts practice as the magnet attracts iron. There are problems to whose solution I would attach an infinitely greater importance than to those of mathematics. For example, touching ethics, or our relation to God, or concerning our destiny and our future. But their solution lies wholly beyond us and completely outside the province of science. I believe you are more believing in the Bible than I. I am not, and you are much happier than I. It may be true that men who are mere mathematicians have certain specific shortcomings, but that is not the fault of mathematics, for it is equally true of every other exclusive occupation. No contradictions will arise as long as finite man does not mistake the infinite for something fixed as long as he is not led by an acquired habit of mind to regard the infinite as something bounded. I am giving this winter two courses of lectures to three students, of which one is only moderately prepared, the other less than moderately, and the third lacks both preparation and ability. Such are the onera of a mathematical profession. The higher arithmetic presents us with an inexhaustible store of interesting truths. Of truths, too, which are not isolated, but stand in a close internal connection, and between which, as our knowledge increases, we are continually discovering new and sometimes wholly unexpected ties. His second motto, Thou nature art my goddess, to thy laws my services are bound.
We must admit with humility that while number is purely a product of our minds, space has a reality outside our minds so that we cannot completely prescribe its properties a priori. It is always noteworthy that all those who seriously study this science, the theory of numbers, conceive a sort of passion for it. Mathematical discoveries, like springtime violets in the woods, have their season, which no human can hasten or retard. It is not knowledge, but the act of learning, not possession, but the act of getting there, which grants the greatest enjoyment.